Hello, I'm Nicholas Fernandez. I'm a computational scientist at the Human Immune Monitoring Center at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. And this video is going to walk you through a short notebook analyzing a single cell gene expression data set made publicly available from 10x Genomics using Cluster Grammar 2 in a Jupyter notebook. So we're going to start off at the Cluster Grammar 2 notebook GitHub repository. If you scroll down, you'll see this contains several examples of different uh, how to analyze different data sets. And uh, we're going to go ahead and click the Launch Jupyter Lab badge at the top. And this is going to take us to a service called uh, MyBinder. And this service, it um, you can point it to different GitHub repositories, and it will launch a Jupyter server that allows you to execute the code in those notebooks. So um, we're actually using the new front end called Jupyter Lab. And here we see the Jupyter Launcher. And we see our sidebar. We can see the contents of our GitHub repository. So if we double click Notebooks and um, open up the 3.0 2700 PBMC single cell RNA-seq, this will open up our um, single cell RNA-seq notebook. So we're going to go ahead and go to Run and run all cells. And we'll, this, the notebook will be running in the background, or we'll walk you through the notebook here. So in this um, notebook, we're analyzing a single cell RNA-seq data set uh, from 2700 PBMC cells that was made publicly available by 10x Genomics. And we're also going to use an external data set called CyberSort that is a bulk uh, gene expression data set of uh, different immune cell types as a reference data set to, um, and show how we can combine these two data sets and use one to predict the cell type of the other. So at the beginning of the notebook, we're just uh, importing some libraries we need and defining a few functions. And then down here, we can see that we're loading our data set using the sparse matrix format from 10x Genomics. And we can see the size of our, our pandas data frame is uh, 32,000 rows by 2,700 columns. So this corresponds to 32,000 genes and 2,700 single cells. So it's a pretty large data set uh, and very high dimensional uh, in the sense that we have 2,700 samples and 32,000 dimensions. It's very, very high dimensional data. So the first thing we're going to do is just drop some gene types that we're not particularly interested in. So we're removing the ribosomal mitochondrial genes. And then we're going to be filtering for the top expressing and most variable genes here. And then we're going to perform some normalization such that each cell has the same UMI count. And, um, and then finally, we're going to ArcSign transform and Z-score as a means of um, kind of ringing in our, our distributions, tails, and uh, making things a little bit more Gaussian. And then Z-scoring so that we can see the um, variability a little bit more easily. So now, after we've done all that processing, we're loading our data frame into Cluster Grammar, and we're producing the widget using this method here, uh, net.widget. So now we can see the interactive heat map of our data. And this, is, uh, this heat map is showing you 2,700 cells as columns and um, the top 250 variable genes as rows. So if you hover over a column, you'll see the specific cell barcode. If you hover over a row, you'll see the gene name. And we'll also look up the gene, uh, the, the actual full name of the gene, and the RefSeq information to help you interpret your data. And it's doing this using a web tool called, called the Harmonizome from Abhimayans Lab. So we can already see that in this data set, we have quite a bit of structure. There appear to be like one, two, three, four main clusters. And this is sort of mirrored if we use the dendrogram to uh, identify clustering at different, different levels. Um, but we. Uh, we can use Cluster Grammar to go and zoom into these clusters and see specifically which genes are being differentially regulated. Um, so here we see it. we have um, lysozyme. And then in this cluster over here, we have um, several different uh, HLAs that are being differentially expressed. And in this prominent cluster over here, we have uh, granzyme, perforin, um, and we can start to get some idea of what cell types are representing these rather large clusters here. But to do this manually be a pretty tedious uh, task. So what this notebook demonstrates is that we can use a reference data set. Uh, in this case, we're using the CyberSort gene expression signatures, uh, which is a bulk gene expression um, signature uh, data set to make a tentative prediction of cell type. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the CyberSort signatures. And uh, we've done a little bit of processing to the data here, but we have the uh, different cell types here as columns. And we're looking at the genes that are representative of these cell types as rows. And then we've gone ahead and um, color coded the different cell types, and we've color coded the genes. So now here, uh, we have like NK uh, activated in yellow, and we can see 
uh, in the rows here, the yellow genes are the, um, these are the genes that are most highly expressed in this cell type. So now we can sort of interpret which, which gene is, is most informative about cell type. And uh, it, let's say we just do a little spot checking. So if we reorder the genes based on um, CD8 T cells, we can see that the most highly expressed uh, genes are CD8A and CD8B. So this sort of checks out. And um, so just looking at this data set in cluster grammar alone is already um, provides us a lot of information and it allows us to interpret the, um, this gene expression signature data set and see if we if if these genes look like they're the like, like they, they make sense. So now um, we're going to go and use a method called uh, predict categories from signatures. And we're giving it our unlabeled data and our signature data set. And we're telling it to predict cell type. And now we're going to, uh, before we look at the results, we're going to look at the similarity of all of our cells to each specific cell type. So now um, the columns are showing us our 2,700 cells. And the rows are showing us the different cell types. So we can see this kind of like staircase pattern that shows us um, for each cell which signature is most similar to. So for instance, we can see that um, the two different types of B cells, so B cell naive and B cell uh, B cell memory, are um, have pretty similar signatures, and it's, it doesn't do a, a very good job of, of distinguishing those two different cell types because they have pretty similar gene expression, uh, according to CyberSert. So now we're going to look at our cells in the gene expression space of CyberSort. So now we can um, we have our 2,700 cells here, and now we have cell type predictions for them. So we can see we have B cells here, and then we can see which um, which genes are most different are, are being expressed in these different clusters. And we're labeling them with their, their cell type here. So we can see the B cells are being uh, labeled as B cells because they are expressing these sort of purplish genes at a high level. And then finally, we can take these labels of our cell type and transfer them to our original view of our data in a different gene expression space. But this time we're looking at the, we're going back to the top 250 variable genes. So if we zoom back, uh, go back here, we can, uh, this was our original view of our data, and now at the bottom of the notebook, we finally have a labeled view of our data. And now we have predictions of the cell types in these clusters. So now we can predict that these are B cells. We can predict that this prominent cluster over here is, is probably NK cells. And um, now we can explore the data set in different ways. We can order by cell type to sort of see which um, different, which, which patterns were, or we can observe at this level. And one interesting thing is that we're actually don't have a very large overlap between the the top 250 variable genes and the genes from CyberSort. So here we can see that uh, if we zoom in here, that these yellow genes, these are the, the CyberSort genes that were used to predict cell type. Um, but despite the fact that there's not a huge overlap between the CyberSort gene expression and the top uh, variable genes in this data set, we preserve a lot of the structure. So that shows us that there's a lot of um, correlations within the gene expression data. And um, and then we can also use these top reordering buttons to just explore the data at a more general level. So we can rank cells by um, their overall gene expression. And then we can hover over and see particular patterns. So we can see macrophages tend uh, appear to have like high gene expression. And over here, we have um, regulatory T cells, which can vary. And uh, there's a lot of different exploration you can do. So we encourage you to explore your, the data. You can also um, explore your own data. Uh, you can also you can upload your data here on a MyBinder instance, or you can run the notebooks locally. And um, we hope you enjoy the notebooks, and thank you.